So let's stand and read the uh, word of God together. It'll be up here um, for you all to read along with me, or you can read off of your device, whatever you would like to do. James 5, verses 7 through 12 says this. It says, to be patient then, brothers, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, and how patient he is for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against each other, brothers, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, Take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we consider blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. And above all, my brothers, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else, let your yes be yes, and your no, no. And this is the word of the Lord. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Let's pray, guys, before I get into this message. Father, we just say that we love you, and we so appreciate you meeting with us this morning in our time of worship. And Father, I just pray that you would reveal truth to us through your word this morning. Father, I just pray that you would bring clarity, Lord God. Father, that you would help me to, to communicate clearly and effectively of what you have to say to us this morning. Lord, we say that we're so grateful for you, that we love you, we praise you, we glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Guys, when I was, uh, I need to do something with this. Rebecca, could you take that? Thank you. As I was preparing um, for this message, which is titled Patience and Suffering, I thought about who do I know in my life that is, is extremely patient in suffering? And immediately I, I thought about my wife, Sandra. I mean, after all, she's been married to me for 42 years, and to be, to be married to me for 42 years takes a lot of grace, mercy, and patience. Contrary to what many of you who know me think, I, am, I didn't used to be the guy that I am right now, if that's saying something, right? And I, you know, as, as couples do, um, they sit around and they'll have conversations. This was probably a few years later, and we were talking and, and about how far we've come in our faith, how much God has changed us. And Sandra, Sandra looked at me and she said, she said, Keith, I have to tell you this. I said, what? She said, honey, she said, there came a point in our marriage that I was suffering <laughs> with you so much. It was so hard being married to you that I cried out to God and I said, Lord, if you don't save this man and if you don't save him and change him right now, I'm going to kill him dead. <laughs> and, I, and I looked at her and I said, and I thought about it and I said, oh my gosh, I must have been horrible because not only was she going to kill me, but she was going to kill me dead. If there, <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't figure that one out, so... But I just, when I woke up this morning, my wife had sent me a text, as Rebecca and Dan said, that she's, as Sandra's part of the team that's over in Nepal right now, and she sent me this message of encouragement. I believe it's encouragement. She said, sorry that I'm not there to pick your clothes out. <laughs> <laughs> But, but make sure that you wear something really nice. <laughs> You're so handsome. Oh, yeah. And Madon, who is the lead pastor over there of the 
of the churches over there in Nepal. Madan says in Nepal, a guy with a beard is considered really manly. <laughs> I can't wait to wrap my arms around you. <laughs> okay, enough. Enough. All right. All right, guys. Well, I'm an old school uh, type of a preacher, so I need a stand, and my, my sermon is on paper. It's not on a device. So this morning, guys, I, I don't want this message to be hard or discouraging for you. Um, I don't want you to feel like you failed or you're failing in any way. My, my heart is for you to be encouraged, and I pray that God gives you guys a greater revelation of the hope that only could be found in the Lord, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's so much in this, this message, this passage that James wrote to cover. He talked about patience, quarreling amongst, amongst believers, oaths, perseverance, the meaning of what you say, your yes be yes and your no be no. And I'm not going to be able to cover all of that because it would take me more than the time that I'm allotted to preach this morning. But I do want to focus on two specific areas that I, I believe that we need to understand, we need to, need to grasp a hold of these. And those two areas are patience and perseverance. Patience meaning waiting on God in our suffering. And perseverance uh, meaning not to give up and the strength to do something until the very end. Now, I want to give you guys some insight of actually what was, what's happening here. Um, Christians are being persecuted at the hands of, of rich people. Uh, Christians are working, they're, they're doing what they are supposed to be doing, um, but the rich are, are not paying them the way that they're supposed to be paid. They're, they're putting them through all kinds of misery. They're actually murdering innocent people. Um, it's really a horrible situation, but it's not really different, to tell you the truth, than a lot of ways that are going on in this day and age, too. So I want you guys to just take a minute and think about it. You worked all week, worked hard, gave everything that you had. You even put in a little extra time. And then payday came around because you have bills you need to pay. You have all these things you need to take care of, and you don't get your paycheck. Imagine how you would feel. That's, that's what these guys are going through. I mean, we might, might even have the choice of making should I get this medication for my health or do I eat? Now, listen, the first words that come out of James' mouth in verse 7 is this. He says, have patience until the Lord's coming. And that's what, that's what the early believers had to hold on to, that the Lord is returning. Christ had already come once. I mean, he was born as a babe. He grew up into a man. He was crucified on our behalf. He was buried. He rose from the grave. He conquered death and sin. And he ascended it to heaven, and now he sits on the throne. But this time when he comes back, it's going to be different. This time when Jesus comes back, he's coming back as a king. Amen? Amen. And he's coming back for his bride, which is us. So when he says to be patient, he's actually saying, stand firm in your faith because better things are to come. There is a future hope. The Lord is coming back. And the suffering that we go through is only temporary. It's only for a short time. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 through 18 says this. It says that our suffering is light and temporary and is producing for us an eternal glory that is greater than anything that you can imagine. Guys, we live in a world that is full of suffering. All around us, there's hardship, there's pain. We see it on the news all the time, what's going on globally right now. 
There's a, a horrible war that's going on between Israel and Hamas over in Palestine. Thousands of lives have been lost. Children have become orphans. Husbands and wives become widow, widows and widowers. They're experiencing suffering, guys, that truthfully we can't even comprehend. Over, I, over here we have a horrible opoi, opioid crisis. We have mass shootings, homelessness. Actually, if we dwell on it too much, it can really make us feel hopeless. Something that I uh, do, you know, quite a bit is we'll go shopping. The wife will go into Walmart or whatever. I like to sit in the car um, because I just don't want to mess her routine up, you know. No, actually, I just don't like shopping. <laughs> But I'll sit there and I'll just observe people. I love observing people. And what I see oftentimes is, is I see physical suffering. People getting out of their cars and can barely walk. The look of stress on people's faces, couples arguing, children totally out of control, parents yelling at their children calling them horrible and degrading things. Why? Because they have lost their patience with them. I will say this, that I believe that anyone who treats a child unjustly, woe are they for the judgment of the Lord to come upon them. And what's the def definition of suffering? So suffering is actually, it's, just, it's the state of undergoing pain distress or hardship but God did not intend for it to be this way did he in Genesis 3 we know the story of Adam and Eve they lived in harmony with God but one day they they committed something they did something they weren't supposed to do and they allowed sin to come in but there's something that I want you guys to know this morning there is hope Turn to your neighbor and say, there is hope in Jesus. Now turn to your other neighbor and say, Jesus is coming back. I always wanted to do that. Dylan does it all the time. I said, let me do it. <laughs> uh, suffering is, is something that we won't. I don't know anyone who, who I've met says, I want to suffer. We don't have to say that we want it because if you live long enough you will experience some kind of suffering in your life the question is will you wait and will you trust god during that suffering well, let me have a see a show of hands of how many of you feel like you are a patient person <laughs> got one out there <laughs> and and how many of you feel like you're impatient and wives don't look at your husbands? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've heard a term most of my life, and this term is don't ask God for patience. <laughs> Why do people say that? Don't ask God for patience. Why are we afraid to ask God for patience when we're going through struggles and suffering and hardships in our life? Where did that come from? I know it's a familiar phrase for people to say, and oftentimes they're joking when they say it, but think about it. God won't reject you and I. He won't make us miserable just because we ask him for patience. That's not God's character. L here's what God's character is. God is awesome. He's compassionate. He's faithful. He's a fortress. He's good. He's great. He's holy. He's majestic. He's miraculous. He's a refuge. He's trustworthy. And he's wonderful. But if we have the mentality that if we ask the Lord for patience through suffering, it actually builds a lack of faith in us, a lack of trust in us, and we lose hope. When we lose hope, it's, it's, a, it's a scary place to be. 
through hurt and pain and suffering, guys, we actually need to run to God. Do you agree? Yeah. yeah. Why do we run to him? Because 2 Peter 1, 3 says this. It says that in our weakness, he will give us strength. God knows the hurt and pain that we go through. But I believe that God sees it differently than we do. He sees it as an opportunity for us to draw closer to him. In verse 7, James says to be patient then, brothers, until the Lord's coming. And then he says, see how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop and how patient he is for the autumn and spring rains. I feel like this is a profound statement for him to make here until the Lord's coming. Why is this profound? Because there's comfort and there's hope in the return of Jesus. No one knows when Christ will, will return. Not even Christ knows when he will return. I'm not a farmer, and I probably never will be a farmer. But one thing that I do know is that you have to be willing to wait for the fruits of your labor. Farmers have to wait for the rain to come in the early season to wet the seeds so that they can germinate. He also has to wait for the rains later in the season for the seeds to swell and mature. Farmers have to be patient. They can't rush the process. I recently um, decided that I was going to spend some money on my yard after my wife okayed it. And I, and I had my yard aerated and overseeded because I'm one of those guys, I love a nice yard. So the, the thing was that we had to go out and water that yard twice a day for three weeks. Twice a day for three weeks, morning and afternoon. So that's what we did. And every day I would... I would look at that yard, and, I, and I'd look for new seeds coming out. And I'm going, man, I'm not seeing anything here. We're, I'm, still, I'm doing exactly what they said, but I'm not seeing any growth. Well, you can best believe by the time that third week came around and I wasn't seeing any growth, I was upset. So what did I do? I messaged him, hey, it's been three weeks. I'm looking around. I got bare spots here. It's just not looking good. You said that I was going to see new growth. I didn't hear anything from them. Then I started thinking, you know what? I heard from you guys all the time when you were trying to sell me <laughs> this process for my yard, but now I'm not seeing anything. You're not answering me. Well, the reason I didn't hear from them guys is because they're the experts on the yard. They, they knew that I just needed to be patient. They knew that there was growth going on in that yard, but I just couldn't see it. Guess what? Now I have new growth everywhere. So what's my point, guys? My point is God is quiet with us at times also. I just needed, and you and I just need to be patient. God is an expert in life too, right? Right? He knows that through suffering, there is growth and new fruit will be produced in us. This is the kind of patience that builds faith and maturity in us. It's actually a process of growth. Dylan, last week, you need to listen to this message about the rich and the wealthy. And as I thought about that, I, I thought about our whole society is actually geared against us being patient. We're almost like we're programmed to never wait on anything. We want it now. Answers are at the, the tips of our fingers with our cell phones or whatever we use. And I believe that this gets in the way and hinders us from being patient with God. Here's some things that we can say or thoughts that we can have, and you can fill it in with whatever you would like. But personally, these are some things that I have said. I've said, I don't want to wait on you anymore, Lord. When that promotion doesn't come through, 
when he doesn't move you out of that job that you, you have where you're just struggling with, nothing's happening. Or it's been too long when our children drift away and they're no longer serving God. You don't hear from them. God, it's been entirely too long. I'm not hearing from them. Where are they? All the time, God's saying, be patient. I'm doing something in them. Why isn't anything happening, Lord, when you've prayed over and over for healing for yourself or for, for others? You pray for people to be saved in your neighborhood or your workplace, but nothing's happening. Are you hearing me, God? When you've cried out to God and you've wept before him, but nothing's happening. Are you truly the God who answers prayer? When you see breakthrough and God answering the prayers of others, but nothing seems to be happening for you. And we can lose faith and we can make a huge mistake. And that huge mistake is that we want to take things into our own hands. And then we spoil the fruits of what the Lord has for us. Just because the farmer waits patiently for the process of planning to take place doesn't mean that he actually isn't doing anything. We can't, we can't make the mistake and, take, uh, and be patient and, and put passivity in there. There is something that we need to do, even though you're not seeing anything happening. We need to press deeper into God's presence. Guys, we need to keep praying. We need to humble ourselves before him and cry out for help. And we also, guys, we need to remember his past faithfulness. When he has come through for you. When he has blessed you. When he has done miracles in your life. But we forget those things, don't we? James says in verse 8 that we need to stand firm. I interpret that as stand firm in our faith. To stand firm on the rock of our foundation. And the rock of our foundation is Jesus. Luke 6, 48 through 49 says this. It says that Jesus Christ is the rock upon which we must build our foundation. Now, I'm going to take a pause here because you guys are pretty quiet. Is everyone okay out there? Yes. Am I too serious? <laughs> uh, perseverance. James 5.11 says, For those who persevere are considered blessed. I love this example that he gives in here of Job. Job, he is a wealthy man. He had everything. And God permits Satan or gives him approval to inflict suffering on Job. And Satan boasts and he says, when I get through with Job, he's going to denounce you He's going to curse you. He won't have any, want to have anything to do with you, God. Job lost practically everything that he had. He went through immense suffering. He lost 10 of his children. So much to the point where Job wanted to give up. He even received unhelpful advice from his friends. But Job continued to praise God through that pain and suffering. After going through all of that, he persevered. God restored Job's health. He gave him twice as much property as he had before. He gave him new children and he lived a long life, all because he persevered. He trusted in God. He stood firm in his faith. Job never completely gave up hope or faith in God. So how do we persevere? 
Well, we recognize that everything is from God's hands. He's in complete control. He hasn't abandoned you. He's with you. He'll never, ever forsake you or leave you. We have to put our hope in Jesus, guys. Jesus is our hope. We have to look for Jesus, to Jesus, for the answers. We can try to find the answers to life's concerns and hardships on the internet or whatever, but you have to remember, these things are coming from other people. I want to go to I, who I know has the answers. That's Jesus. And also, lastly, guys, we have to trust in the Lord no matter how long it takes. It may take a day, it may take a week, it may take a month, or it may take 30 years, or you may leave this earth and never see it. But believe the whole time God is doing something. So I want to leave you guys with these reminders. I'm going to close this message. If I could have the band come up. I want to remind you guys that we are to continue to praise God through our suffering. We need to stand firm in our faith and stand on the rock who is Jesus. And our suffering, guys, is temporary. And there's something that's going on in us through that suffering. It's producing for us an eternal glory that is greater than anything, anything that we can ask or imagine. Remember, guys, Jesus will return in all his glory. Amen? Amen.